G'day everyone, I'm Ross. Uh, this is the composite shop and this is episode 10 of our mega surf kayak build. It's a composite carbon fiber surf kayak. Uh, this particular one you see in front of you here is actually being made for a client in WA or in Western Australia where they have some very big surf around Margaret River yelling up. Uh, absolutely beautiful region for surfing and uh, and there's not many uh, surf kayakers over there so I'm glad to see some of my product over there. We've got a bit of a, a core group or a niche group and they're having a great time in our mega surf kayaks over there so lots to come don't forget life on the hulls guys very important that you jump over there and, uh, and uh, subscribe to that channel that's my composite catamaran build channel I'm going right in deep into foam core lamination into a uh, yacht construction so there's plenty of info there that can be put, put straight back into yacht restoration and yacht building and obviously fiberglass building of any way, shape or form can be translated out of what I'm doing over there. And uh, uh, please make a comment. Don't forget to comment on both the channels. If you like it, let me know. I'd really be happy about that. So thanks for joining me. Let's get to work. With the center pillar now installed, it was time to uh, put in the end grabs or the grab loops that actually form the, uh, the bases of part of the safety of this boat. And uh, I'm gonna go through the procedure right now. Okay, so now I've got those center pillars installed and they're pretty much glued in place. I can then get my drill that I drilled the holes with. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill straight down and lengthwise, I'm gonna actually make a V-shaped chamber inside that foam. Now, uh, I don't wanna go side to side because I might break the edge of the 50 millimeter foam. So imagine I've got my piece of foam like that. I'm gonna drill down and I'm gonna make a slight chamber therefore when i pour resin into it it'll make a, a barb shaped plug encasing the rope tie down in it um very important that i don't go side to side because if i do that i could break it and i'm going to end up with gel coat or flow coat flowing all over the inside of the boat we don't want that it has happened to me once fortunately it was my own boat that i did it on so i'm going to basically drill in into the foam I know I'm in the center of the pillar because I've got those little X's that I made there, little points. Go down. I'm only gonna go down to around about two inches. Open it up from front to back. And do the same here. Okay, so these are the rope loops I'm going to insert into the deck here. And they're gonna go in like so and leave a nice soft and pliable uh, mount for a webbing loop that can then extend past the, uh, the length of the boat so that if ever he has to swim with it, or it's, it's like, a, I guess it's like a leash on a surfboard. Um, the problem is that this was a hard mounted piece of uh, aluminium or stainless and that would have hit you in the surf, you'd uh, likely lose a lose an arm or break an arm with that even though the boat's uh, full of water, something protruding like that could be extremely dangerous. I'm going to mix up some wax in styrene into some gel coat and the reason why I'm not going to pour straight gel coat into this chamber and of course I'm going to do it in black I wouldn't go putting white or even yellow on this because if I get a drip of it it's going to look pretty ordinary on it so I like to keep my colors pretty baseline consistent and that assists in uh, in presentation as well but certainly I'm not going to go and buy four liters of f um, black flow coat just for the sake of it, when I can simply mix my own flow coat here. So it's very important that uh, I am able to mix this on my own. So I can basically pour in, you know, do about a hundred mils of black gel coat. And just like when I was doing the seam, I'm then going to Add my wax and styrene to the mixture. And again, I can go to 30%, but I'm not going to. 
I'm going to put in around about 20% into the mixture. And then I'm going to stir it thoroughly. Now, that's going to do two things. That's going to make this highly pourable. So the good thing about that is, is it's going to basically pour into the hole quite quickly and it'll settle very quickly. But the second thing is it's not going to be tacky when I'm finished. So this should hopefully be a one shot pour. Occasionally I've had uh, points where I've had some small bubbling later on and I've had to go back and see and reapply some touch up flow coat. But you know, that's just part of working with modern composites is uh, this resin is not a given, although it is a pretty uh, close science, it's, it's it's still a bit of a dark art because you don't know. I mean, I've got a day today, it is 90% humidity today and 35 degrees outside, 32 degrees inside here. Um, I'm probably not in the best situation for pouring this, but I've got to get this job done today and get this boat out of here. Okay, so I've catalyzed this at 1.5%. So I want a reasonable kickoff here, but I don't want it to go off too fast so I'm not going to get all my material in. But I've got to make sure that I've really incorporated the wax in styrene here to make sure that uh, I've got a really good mixture. Now, it is highly liquid. This it's, uh, The viscosity is very, very loose, and it'll make it pour quite quickly, but you do need to be a bit careful of mess. Uh, fortunately, any excess will end up on a glossy surface and it'll be reasonably easy to wipe off. But notice I've left my masking tape in place there because I'll be able to uh, remove that in a moment. So I'll take my string out and get it ready. I'm going to make a little V with my cup here and I'll begin to pour and fill these void in here and I'll pretty much fill it to the brim from a height so that I'm not getting a big glug of it. There's one, same deal with this. And I'll let that sit there for a minute while it settles into that void. Why I'm letting it sit is because any reaction to the foam or anything, it needs to take a little time to settle what I don't want here is for it to go off on me before I get my eight millimeter cord in place. And I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Go back to the front. You can see there I've got it pretty much full to the brim. I'm gonna add a touch more because when I put the string in, it's going to overflow. Which is sort of the desired effect. I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute. Now, next thing is I'll get my rope. And because I've got a little plug on the end, because I've heat shrunk it, I've actually heated the end, I've hot knifed it. I can then simply, I'll twiddle this end in. Until it bottoms out. Now I can't twiddle this side, so I need to almost plunge up and down. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually grabbing all the fibers of that rope with the gel coat and essentially encasing it in place. And then I'll begin the settling process, which is simply to spread out a little bit of extra the flow coat around here. Again, I'm working from front to back, from the front of the boat to the back of the boat because I don't want to have to do it twice. And I'll go down the back and do the same thing here. And I might need just a top up because it's settled. Twiddle one end in. It's actually sinking around the base of the rope. So this is why I continually keep working back and forward, topping it up, making sure there's plenty of resin in there to fill the voids as it settles. What I'm aiming for is a lovely little square pattern. 
Now you're probably wondering how strong this rope is. Anyone that's seen my life on the holes uh, videos where I've demolded one of those large modules, I actually used a piece of this string with a crane to pull a 100 kilo part off a mold. So there's absolutely no question as to how strong that rope is. And once that's gel coated in place, it is not going anywhere. So as you can see now, that's pretty much settled. The next part is the, the hard part. Have to remove your gloves or the, the, the um, masking tape's going to stick to you. Now you always pull towards the face of the material you're trying to mask. So in this case, I'm gonna mask it. I'm pulling towards the rope to get that beautiful fine line. And I'll bin my excess. I'll show you here over the top. And again, we're pulling towards, slightly towards the face of my material. And again, on the end, towards. And you're probably wondering what I'm gonna do here. Now I need to remove this or that masking tape will actually go hard with the, um, the gel coat. What I do, because I've got both of these here, I'll join them together like a like a, uh, a sweet or a confectionery or candy wrapper. You'd call it over there in the States or Europe. And I'll simply pull it in a bit. And I'll keep twisting it until it's out of the way and I'll leave that there until it sets. Same deal with this. Now I'll let that sit for about half an hour and I'll be able to come down and remove that candy wrapper of masking tape that I've left there. And there you have our leash mounts fitted on our mega boat. Okay, so because we're laying a lot of adhesive down to keep these pillars centered um, and to glue them in place, there's a nice way that I've found to dress it up a little bit. You can see here I've actually masked a centimeter away from the actual center pillar and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a bead of uh, marine black sealant around there and then pull the masking tape and end up with a nice straight finish there as well. So there's lots of little detailing things you can do just to dress your product up and just to finish the job off nicely and then I'm going to come in tomorrow all this will be done I'll be able to then uh, put the thigh braces on and then install the seat and cut some foot blocks and this boat's ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll apply a, um, a bit of marine sealant, Sikaflex, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to use, all the way along the pillar. Don't need a lot. And it'll also act as a sealant to stop water getting in under that, under that pillar. What I'll do is I'll just make sure we've got a nice smooth line around. It's a very difficult area to clean up there. I've got it all over me. Take my glove off. Very important. Always take your glove off before you handle masking tape. And then I'll remove the tape. And that's perfect. Thanks for joining me everyone, that's the end of this uh, episode and basically the next episode will be the final one where we actually put the seats and the thigh braces in the boat and give it a final polish ready for packing and shipping to our client. Thanks for joining me on the composite shop and I'll see you next time.